Okay, Edward. Tomorrow we're gonna put you in the field right here in the river. We're gonna drop you off in the chopper. As soon as you get out, I want you to head up the slope to the east. And make a traverse along the east formation? Yeah, you come all the way up to the top of the hill. Focus on the fault. You can go back down the other side if you got time. We're gonna take rock chips, soil, pan concentrates. How many samples do we want to see? Take a couple samples every 50 meters. And I want you to focus on that fault. We're looking for copper and we're looking for gold. In the remote highlands of New Guinea, geologists are engaged in a classic treasure hunt. Somewhere beneath this lush and wet jungle, they believe they will find a significant deposit of precious minerals. The odds are stacked against making a big discovery. But years of systematic groundwork have led geologists to this area, and each new day in the field comes with a hope that they will find what they're looking for. Back in the field station, the harvest of exploration comes in the form of rock core samples. Each sample is carefully tested for its magnetism, its chemistry, and its mineral content. And piece by piece, a picture of the geology beneath the jungle is revealed. There are enormous challenges ahead involving engineering, the environment, the social impact, and sustainability. If they can't be overcome, the mine will never open, no matter what riches lie beneath. In the new age of mining, there is a new set of ground rules that must be followed. Chile's Atacama Desert is one of the driest places on Earth and home to some of the planet's greatest copper deposits. Here at Minera Spence, BHP Billiton has developed a mine that is a model of how a modern mine should be run. In this state-of-the-art maintenance shop, massive haul trucks are checked on a routine basis to ensure that the safety of the workers and the efficiency of the mine are kept at an optimum level. At the start of every shift, Axia Rojas makes the two-story climb to her office. She is a certified haul truck operator, born and raised in the nearby community of Sierra Gorda, and a highly skilled member of the team that operates the mine. Her job is to maneuver her 240-ton truck into the open pit, where it receives its load of copper ore. It's just the first step in a journey that will transform rock into useful metals. Desde que comenzamos nuestra operación, nuestra visión de negocio fue ser una operación de BHP Bit donde está cae simple. Nuestra idea, el pilar fundamental, es lograr un trabajo seguro la seguridad como base de todo trabajo. The trucks dump their load into a crusher, which leads to the mill and refinery. There, the ore is crushed into a fine powder and the copper extracted. The main control room allows the workers to monitor the entire refinery's operation. The dissolved copper is collected, concentrated, and poured onto long basins, where it undergoes a purification process called electro-winning.
200,000 tons of copper are produced every year at this mine high in the Andes Mountains, destined for markets around the world, where it will be used in wiring, pipes, electronics, and thousands of other applications. Our modern world is literally held together with the materials that come out of mines. Take any home in any developed city, and a quick glance reveals just how many minerals we use in our everyday lives. The wallboards and the paint that covers them contain about 13 different minerals. Anything plastic that's also extracted from the earth. The kitchen is a hot spot for minerals, especially those used to make stainless steel like nickel and iron. A television contains 35 different elements. Even toothpaste has six ingredients that come from mines. Hey, where's the can opener? Nearly everything is connected to mining in some way. The food we eat and how we cook it, the electricity we use, our recreational activities, the tractors that plant our crops, the roads that connect us, the wires that carry power and information, all depend on the minerals extracted from mines around the world. With the truck permanently locked in four-wheel drive, Greg Probst and Nanior Aralak of Freeport McMorin make their way towards the Jaya Wijaya Mountains in Papua, Indonesia. I don't know about dry season. Man. I don't think I've ever seen a dry season. Wow. Their destination is a legendary mine that is the largest gold and copper mine in the world. The engineering challenges in this rugged landscape included building a road to the top of a mountain. Bechtel, the engineering firm contracted to build the road, started by lowering small tractors onto the treacherous slopes. They tunneled through rock, laid foundations in the soft mud of the coastal mangrove swamps, and succeeded in creating what many thought was impossible. Before reaching the mine itself, the road passes through Tembagapura, a whole new city that had to be constructed to support the mine, its workers, and their families. From here, the mine is still a long ways off, and the fastest way to the top is by helicopter. From the air, the scope of the operation becomes apparent. The mill and supporting plants are nestled in a valley at an elevation of over 2,500 meters, but the ore body itself is much higher still. To reach the mine, the world's longest cable tramway was built, spanning an incredible 1.6 kilometers from the mill site to the ore deposit. The cable car finally reaches the summit, which is over 4,200 meters high. Thousands of tons of heavy equipment have been pulled and pushed up the mountain to build this mine in the clouds. There are few mines in the world that have overcome the engineering challenges that Grasberg posed. But then again, there are few mineral resources as big as Grasberg. It is literally a mountain of copper and gold. Even as the mine continues to tackle the engineering challenges of this remote part of the world, they are also developing the local human resource, the Papuans themselves. Mine work is a highly skilled job with multiple specializations, yet Freeport McMoran is committed to increasing the percentage of local Papuans hired each year. At the Nemingkawi Mining Institute, Papuans receive the specialized training required to operate the mine, particularly at extreme elevations. New operators train on custom simulators that teach them the techniques needed to be more productive and keep themselves and other workers safe before they get behind the wheel of a 360-ton truck. Freeport McMoran already has over 30 years of experience operating one of the largest open-pit mines in the world. 
But those engineering challenges are changing as Grassberg moves into a new phase of mining, going underground. Workers at the Creighton Mine in Sudbury, Canada, know all about the challenges of underground mining. Since the first deposit of nickel was discovered here over a century ago, hundreds of underground mines have been dug into the hard rock of the Sudbury Basin, creating a community that is founded on the nickel beneath its feet. Creighton is now one of the deepest mines in the world and one of the most modern. An underground mine is created when the ore is too deep to mine from the surface. To reach the ore, a shaft is sunk straight down into the ground, and tunnels, called drifts, are excavated to access the ore, using equipment which is designed to keep the operators safe, such as remote-controlled loaders. The Creighton Mine Complex is like an underground city that never sleeps. Yet, even after a century of mining, geologists believe that there is still more ore to be found. At this advanced underground exploration station, geologists and geophysicists are using sophisticated tools to look deeper into the rock. If all goes according to plan, the new underground expansion will double the amount of ore in the mine, adding many more years of productivity. All this is good news for Sudbury, where new discoveries bring renewed prosperity. With a century of experience, the city is well-versed in managing the complex and challenging relationship between a mine and the local community. Hafo region of Ghana, mining is a much newer venture. Most people earn a living by farming, and although it's not a wealthy area by most standards, communities here are well established, with customs and a way of life that dates back generations. When Newmont Mining discovered a gold deposit here 10 years ago, they were working with a community that had no previous experience with mines. Everyone realized that building a mine in Ahafo would mean a big change of life. So, before anything could proceed, the first question that Newmont had to answer was, how would a mine benefit the people of this area? When a mining company proposes creating a mine in any country, it has to lay the proper groundwork. And that means developing a real working relationship with the locals. Newmont learned that the key to a successful project was to communicate regularly with the community, to be transparent, and to listen to the people's concerns. Given the land it needed, one concern of the community was the impact the mine would have on farming, the primary way of life at Ahafo. A certain number of jobs with the mine would be available, of course, but the ore in the ground would eventually run out. Newmont decided to assist local people in obtaining the new skills needed to replace farming with other income-generating opportunities. In partnership with Ghanaian and non-governmental organizations, the Livelihood Enhancement and Empowerment Program, called LEAP, was created, a community-established training and education program. The health of the community was also an important consideration. HIV, AIDS, and malaria are very real concerns in this area. So projects that help bring resources to local health clinics, malarial nets into households, and educational resources into communities create lasting benefits. While challenges continue at Ahafo, there is a firm commitment to making the mine about people not just rocks or holes in the ground. Even when a mine offers much needed prosperity, a community may decide that there are other risks that outweigh the benefits. 
Often those risks are environmental, and they can be the most challenging of all. The MacArthur River cuts through northern Australia's rugged outback for 300 kilometers. Midway along the river's path lies a huge zinc deposit, home to Extrata's MacArthur River mine. Uh, it should be right. We planted over 25,000 trees last year in October, and uh, the wet season we had uh, was enough to get them established. They're Gary Taylor is Extrata's environmental manager, charged with the task of monitoring the mine's impact on the river. The zinc deposit lies directly below the riverbed, and when the river rechanneling was first proposed, the biggest issue was whether it could be done in an environmentally responsible way. Many Aboriginal groups live along the river, and there were concerns about the effects of the mine on the water, the surrounding land, and on the spirit of the river itself. Extrata knew that if they wanted the mine to go ahead, they had to show that the river could be rechanneled in a way that would keep the water protected. Gary and his team carefully studied the biodiversity of the river so that the new channel would be as close as possible to the river's natural state. Working with local experts, native plants and seeds were collected and cultivated for planting in and around the new channel. From Gary's perspective, the new riverbed is a work of art, carefully sculpted to create the unique ecosystems that are found in a natural river, including snags made of boulders and tree trunks. The water is monitored constantly by Extrata and by governmental and non-governmental agencies, and the results communicated to the public. The is 9.69. 9.69. The age is 8.1. 8.1. The MacArthur River Mine is just one example of the extraordinary efforts that go into minimizing the environmental impact at mine sites around the world. In Wyoming's Powder River Basin, wildlife thrives in the prairie grasslands. To the casual observer, it's nearly impossible to tell that only a few years ago, this was an active part of a massive coal mine. Arch Coal's Black Thunder operation is mining some of the largest coal seams in the world. The scale of operation here is huge. This one mine produces almost 9% of America's coal. Much of it is high grade ideal for use in the new generation of clean, coal-fired plants being built across the continent and around the world. Nearly 40% of the world's electricity is generated by coal. New technologies like methane capture and liquid gasification are decreasing greenhouse gases. Future technologies such as carbon capture and sequestration promise to even further eliminate carbon release from coal processing. The seam that Black Thunder is mining is buried under nearly 60 meters of earth and rock that must be removed to access the coal. That overburden is eventually used in the restoration process, carefully planned out before the mine was even opened. And future generations will barely know a mine was ever here. In the highlands of New Guinea, planning for a mine's closure seems a long way off. Despite excellent geological results, there are numerous obstacles to overcome, including economic viability, environmental impact, engineering challenges, and social issues before the site can take its place among the new mines of the 21st century. Mining is a global endeavor that brings women and men to the extreme landscapes of the planet into sensitive ecologies and among diverse people and cultures. In each place, the unique challenges demand an enormous effort, passion, creativity, and integrity to plan and create a modern, sustainable mine that is responsive to the local context. 
The products mined from the Earth touch every aspect of our lives, and the ongoing efforts to find and develop resources are essential to the well-being of our modern world. In today's mining where challenges are complex, the solutions demand clever thinking by people from a wide range of fields. Yet the challenges are rewarding. Methods of sustainability continuously evolve. They are applied and then adapted, raising the standards to new levels, ensuring that all citizens of our planet reap the benefits of mining in the modern world.